I don't know if I can blame it on the heat. I don't know what we can blame it on, but it is a very, very hot day here. Welcome to Juma Game Reserve. My name is Mark. And, well, we've had a few startup issues. We've had computers crashing and programs crashing. And I don't know if they, that could well be. Um, FC is a bit of an oven at the moment. It's one of those really, really hot days that is sort of an anomaly. The temperature has spiked dramatically. We're getting a very, very hot wind that's coming in from the north. Temperatures are probably way up in the high 30s, maybe even 40 something. And we stopped here on the open area, right outside camp almost. And we're right on the northern edge. Looking south, there's quite a ridge ahead of us where it slopes down towards the southern end and Philemon's Dip towards the west uh, and Zoe's road slopes down that way too and we started off with probably about four species in one shot and slowly but surely every time we wanted to go live and the program crashed or something the animals moved around a little bit and I have to I'm gonna fill you in on what we saw but first I have to show you something and to show you something we're gonna have to drive a little bit the first thing I want to do is just this bird that we've got here, which was one of the four species we had in shot. It was the other three were mammals. The one species was impala. There were impala everywhere. In all these po pockets of shade were, were, were parts of this herd of impala. Some of them have run off the open area behind us to the, to, to the north. Some of them have made their way down towards Gauri Dam. And there's still a couple of them standing around. Yeah, in the shade, so that the herd is very well spread out. But there's something very special amongst this herd that we need to go and look at. But the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to jump on the bandwagon or the Land Rover. I'm going to check this challenge. <clears throat> and since I don't have it in my booklet, I'm thinking I haven't checked it off yet. So I would like you to tell me what bird this is so that I can do so because I, I know I'm probably well over halfway through and I've been neglecting things. So I do need a bit of help in, in catching up with my list and I'm hoping that somewhere out there besides Lynn in Canada because I know Lynn has written to me and mentioned that uh, she's been trying to keep track but there have been a couple of drives she's missed. So I need maybe two or three people just if you have been keeping track of my list bit of luck I can keep it up to date I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine mammals and two reptiles no, yeah no more than that right, never mind the reptiles nine mammals we'll start with confirming my number of mammals as well as confirming what number drive I am on if anybody's keeping track of that because I haven't, I'm, I'm really bad with those kind of things. And that should be an easy bird. One mammal that was here that I wanted, because I, I think I've got warthog of the four species. There was the impala, this bird we've just seen now, and the yeah, warthog I've got on the list. So there were warthog as well. I'm not naming the other antelope that was here, but they also moved off into the bush. Hello, ladies and little boys. Looking very heavy. Fowl running alongside us. Thanks, Paddy. New Jersey comes back. 
New Jersey's ahead of the game today. Paddy Mulligan, hello Paddy. How are the baby tortoises doing? Paddy, first one back, Mr. Roy. In the Carolinas. How's that hurricane doing, Roy? And Lynn in Canada. How much did Guinea Fowl? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Now, something came down this way that I have to find. Because we have all been on tent talks. Tender hooks, tender hooks. We've all been on our toes, waiting for this moment in time. And you know what? Ah, down there. So maybe you've already seen it on Gary Dam Cam, Juma Waterhole Cam. Some of the Impala are down there. I'm supposing that some of you are getting where I'm going with this whole thing. If you can't guess, that's fine, because then it's still a surprise. Sorry, Dubs. Surprise. Are we going to be surprised? Oh, there are those other antelope. I can still get them. Um, I'm going to actually head this way, because of the way the sun is, the way the light is. See if at one particular animal, yes, there it is. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please. May I present to you the one, the only, no, it's not the only, the one, the first of many, the most beautiful child at Juma right now, Impala number one, on camera, on the 9th of November, 2011. Oh, nice big eagle flying away in the background. Little baby, you must watch for eagles too. They also eat baby Impala. Look at that little child. Now when we were sitting on the open area waiting for waiting to start the drive and it was sort of getting close to four and we were setting up shop and we had four different species on camera and far to the right to the western edge of quarantine out of the bushes came this mom and this little child and I reckon that she was just coming back after giving birth and she's bringing it back to the herd. How long she spent in the bush alone with it, I don't know, but I'm, just from the way the herd was situated, the fact that there were no other impala coming from that side of the world, tells me that I think she finally came back with it, and she's come back early because she walks away, we noticed it there, and we've noticed again right now, here she comes, she's about to approach it again, and uh, she's grazing near it. But she was walking and the little one was lagging behind considerably. And I don't think it's quite bonded with her yet, because it's maybe been too short. Although at one point it did run after her. Must be a little boy. None of the others have shown any interest in it that I have seen as yet. Um, whether that's unusual or not, I can't tell you. But you see, once again, she's walking off and the little one standing there in the shade. The closest impala to it are three big males who are all posturing. And the little one's actually walking up to the box of our power, power outlets that come to the camera and everything. I hope it doesn't think that's mom, the base of that tree. The camera used to be in this tree, by the way. In the old days, if the camera was still there, the camera would be able to point right down at this little child. But mom has walked off. Ah, she's coming back. She's actually coming back for it now. And turning away. What are you going to leave it now? Maybe it wasn't her. 
No, it is her. I think that is her that's just walked away. Because she stopped. A number of the herd are trying to make their way back to the open area. Little one standing in the shade of the tree. And mom came back a little bit. Walked away. If I go a little bit forward, we might see how it, walk, how it pans out. Ah, she's walking away again. Um, there was a very poignant moment, actually, when we, when we first noticed them. When mom and little one walked out onto the open area. And the one thing that told me that little one's a few hours old, because it, it, it started... Well, it, it took up the stance that it was going to, about to be toileting and mom stood behind it in exactly the same stance and it, it was almost like they were doing it in unison. Once again, now starting to move. And where does he run to? To a big male. Now there's mom waiting. Mom is waiting. But, yeah, she's telling it, stay close to me. Touching noses, stay close to me. Follow these little black heels of mine. <laughs> Some people are saying, put it in the car and steal it. Well, I'll tell you something. If this little one continues to misbehave like this, it's, it's cat food. I in fact, I'm pretty sure that Shivambalana is going to be making her first kill soon. And Shivambalana is going to be finding a little child like this that doesn't stay close to mom. And she doesn't look like a very young female either. Maybe a, f um, a, a, a you, a, an you. Maybe a female will be more attentive if it's her first baby. And sometimes after having a few babies, they become less attentive. I don't know if that rings a bell with any of you ladies out there who have had children. Your first child you overprotective, your second child you understand a little bit more. Your third child, ah, you're an old hat at it all. We've just seen another impala actually show interest in it by the way. And then of course by your fourth child you like you blase, ah, it's just another brat. lot easier. A lot of those n whining and crying moments are ignored because you know not much. Anyways, there we go. First little impala of the day, of this, the year, of the season, of the month. And, well I don't know if we have an out outright winner. I think the closest person to have gotten it right was Jody in New Mexico. And Jody initially said the 8th I think. Jody, and then a follow-up email said 8th, 9th, 10th around full moon and I think in that respect Jody was correct I think the next closest was Suzanne Myers who was yesterday the 8th of November and well actually to, to be honest with you on our way back from Treehouse Dam this morning Tara and I found oh, they're all running Oh, it's that big, um, that big ram bull, that ram bull. Oh, we'll see that in a minute. But Tara and I found one amongst the herd this morning, and I don't think it's this one. I think it was another one. Tara seems to think that the one that we saw this morning was the female that she saw two days ago. Um, and we've known there have been a couple of impala lambs seen in the last few days, but it's all about the first and the first one that we see here at Juma and I'm glad actually the first one is our herd of impala that we always get to see either here at the dam or up on the open area near camp we're going to see these other antelopes shortly because I want to get them for my checklist there are a couple of dugger boys lying in the mud but just to go through the impala birthing list um, on the seventh was Jules because oh, I forgot Jules's birthday oh some serious aggression out of these impala rams and they're causing havoc with everybody else white tails flashing pandemonium breaking out 
an impala with a bad mood. Um, so yes, Suzanne was on the 8th of November. And it was only really Jody who covered all her bases and said 8th, 9th or 10th. And if you did send in the 9th of November and I don't have it on my list, then you can rack me and thrash me. I, yeah. I've been through all the emails on my account and on the questions account and I think I've got everybody's. Tomorrow, actually the, the original one that I had was tomorrow, Jody in New Mexico from Los, Los Alamos. That was the original date that Jody gave me. I think it was, or well, maybe that's the other Jody. But uh, also a new moon. And also, um, it was Deborah tomorrow. Deborah who was saying that it's her birthday tomorrow. No, no, just saying also full moon. When is full moon? Tonight or tomorrow? What? I don't exactly know. But it is, we'll see when the sun goes down, I'll tell you. I don't know advertised times and dates, but I can tell you when I see the moon rising. Let's turn around a little bit. Because amongst those antelope, is an antelope that I want for my list. There's a big male. Seems to be posturing with one of the females. And I think it's the big male that they have at the lodge that you're almost able to walk up to. He's so relaxed. There's actually also a young one here. And then we're going to be on our way. Because they're moving into some thicket. And well, now we can't see the male, but we can see these females with a fairly young baby. And of course our new little baby in parlor. Texas, your birthday today. Happy birthday, Rose. If I could, I would send you a yellow rose. Hello, little baby. Rosie wants zebras, elephants, and giraffe. Well, let's see what we can do about that. Right, there's my second ID for the day, after the guinea fowl. And now we'll try and keep the sun behind us for a little while, or to the side of us, but looking into the sun is pretty harsh. Sadly that bull has moved off behind those bushes. For a hot day, there's quite a lot of activity happening here. All these herbivores and these impala rams that are bouncing around as though they've got energy to spare. Not a hint of cloud anywhere in the sky. Water buck also at the top end of the dam. Sorry, ladies. And I'm going to leave that up to whoever's zooming at the moment to 
to keep track of the buffalo and the waterbuck and there's the hamacorp and all these impala and guinea fowl coming down on that side. Heron standing with his wings open. We'll go and look at another dam and see what kind of things are happening there. Like maybe a treehouse dam. Pinky, hello. Pinky and Keith, Mac and David in the UK. Thank you very much. That's Nyala for me. Now I've got the... Oh, there it is. I'm going to try and keep, keep track of things now. If I can catch up, get up to date with everything. Everyone. Nyala. Cousin of the Kudu, cousin of the Bushbuck and the Satitunga and the Bongo and the Lesser Kudu and the Mountain Nyala. Spiral horned antelope family, Cagalaphids. Very hot day, I've said that already, but it's like it's when it's cold, it seems the more we say it, the more we try and convince ourselves that it's not so. But it is a very hot day, and it'll be interesting to see what we find. There is, on the onset, from the outset, on the onset, doesn't appear to be too much happening in the way of bird life right now. So the best bet is to follow the drainage lines, it's the coolest areas, there's a lot more shade. Thanks, Kathy. Is that West Virginia, Kathy? Zoomy at the moment till after six. Thanks, Kathy. Nice to know. I did wish happy birthday to Rose. Texas. Happy birthday, Rose. In Texas. I was saying I would give you a yellow rose for your birthday. Would that I could. But perhaps I can find you another flower. It might also be yellow. Can't find your morning glory because it's not morning. By now they're closed. Although there is a yellow morning glory that's out at the moment, but once again, probably this time of the day, they won't be open. In fact, I don't know, there's not much that's open in a really hot, dry afternoon like now. Even the leaves are starting to look a little desiccated. called that storm uh, uh.
Thanks, Roy. Roy just saying that this, the, the system that they have at the moment off the Carolinas is still a tropical storm. Not quite a hurricane just yet. But what I'm looking at right now are the, the seed pods just up here. A little bunch of them. And I have to admit, I haven't seen them for some time now. Because the flowering wasn't as profuse as it was this year. Um, this is the wisteria, the tree wisteria. And as much as we love the animals and everything else, there's just as much life happening with regards to the plant life and the insect life and, the, well, just so many other wonderful things. And this year, we're looking at a lot of the plants that we have. And since we got the checklist, and you're probably going to have these plants on your checklist, I thought it would be nice to show you the different stages of these trees. Some of the trees that we have, we were getting really attached to the sausage tree as it was going from really dry to getting its leaves and flowers and the whole flowering season and in the interim while we were watching the sausage tree we started seeing these wisterias coming into full bloom blooming better than they've bloomed in the last few years and for the first time in as many years they're actually starting to seed and just like all the legumes it is a bit of a, it's like a bean pod but I haven't seen wisteria seeds for quite some time now and they're still going to grow a little bit more, those pods. Please tell the wind to stop. Tell when to stop? The wind. Oh, tell the wind to stop. Maybe you should have closed the gate. Yes, it is playing how awkward mm -hmm. zooming in. But I think you got it, Tara. Hmm. Give it a few days, the weeping wattles are going to be beautiful. A few flowers on them at the moment, but give it a few days, they're going to be showy. I think the term we can use for a particularly beautiful blossoming time, showy flowers. Oh, we've got small wisteria seeds up there. Hello Sharon in Pittsburgh, home of the Pirates, Ohio. Is Pittsburgh, Ohio? Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh? I think so. Anyway, Sharon, I think I got that question, I was breaking up a little bit, about the impala births. Is it just because they first, what about the warbuck and the nyala, etc, etc? It's only really, Sharon, it's only really the Impala that have this very specific birthing period. And maybe it's also because they are so numerous. There's so many of them and it's, just, it's also noticeable that we see the Impala and we, we, we concentrate on the Impala. The Waterbuck, the Kudu, the Nyala, they don't really have as strict a birthing or a breeding season as the Impala. So uh, you can expect... The young of those species at almost any, not any time of the year, but sort of at any time over a given period. Here's a bird with wishful thinking. The recent rains that we have filled up this little pond. Well, it's not even a pond, it's actually it originated as a mitre drain, which is essentially a, a, a bump in the road and a means to force the water off the road so that erosion doesn't occur. And over time, warthog and 
probably buffalo and rhino and things have enlarged it every time they come and sit in it they take away a whole lot of mud and it gets bigger and bigger in fact it's probably twice the size of when I first got here you can see a bunch of it might be masonry wasps collecting clay but it's just too early in the season for it to be full of tadpoles and frogs and things so as I, that's why I say this particular bird is quite optimistic I don't have it on my list but that means I might not have ticked it off if I did have it before so I'm doing it again so this is number whatever is it three I think I don't know this is another one for the checklist today this particular brown bird is looking for aquatic life Sure, it's hot. Any stations at Treehouse? They're from coming. a tree house confirm 200 meters south of mighty Okay, thanks. <clears throat> I'm just going to move up a little bit because it looks like there's actually some terrapin trails in that mud. And they would be baby terrapins if they are. We've also got a herd of buffalo coming our way. Okay, well, let's go the other side of this little walk because then we're going to see those terrapin tracks better. But those would probably be hatchling terrapins. Now you can see those lines in the mud. Hello bird. Hasn't even flown away, I'm sitting right next to it. But there, a few mud trails. No, it's gone away the bird. A couple of little mud trails. And I'm guessing that those are little hatchling terrapins. Now that the bird has flown away, excuse me a moment. Saving moths from drowning. It's 
three of the same species. Actually, yeah, these I've seen in July. I've never seen them this late in the year. Sorry, I'm, I'm moving them, but I want to get the sun on them. All three of them were in the water. Not what that bird was after. Sorry, Tara, no, I'm probably moving around a lot. But this morning I was talking about diurnal moths and how colorful they are. And this is one of the examples. These are known as handmaidens. I don't know how, what its chances of survival are. Oh, there, one's flown away. It's full of mud. But, funny, I was thinking that that terrapin, I mean, that bird, I nearly said its name. I don't know if we got the name yet. We might have put my earpiece in. Where are um, the wet wipes? Thanks, Dawn. I was making fun of that bird, thinking that it was the height of optimism, being there, hoping to catch frogs. But instead, actually, I think that bird might well have had a couple of meals already. There are tracks of a number of baby terrapins. Maybe it was only one. Hard to tell. But there isn't a sign of a baby terrapin in the water here, unless it's burrowed into the mud, knowing that it's drying up. It could very well have been food for that particular bird. No. Hello. Is there anybody out there? Hello. Well, I see everybody's saying hello in chat. Hello. Oh, you're not supposed to say is anything. Gosh, why is there sound? Ah, because that's live. So I'm coming through without much of a time lag. No, you all left. Yes, indeed, you did. Hi. But can you hear me? Is another. But yes, I can hear myself, so I'm pretty certain that you can hear me now. Those of you still on the Juma Safari page, I hope you are. We came back to camp. We switched everything off. Not clear why we're not getting a signal from the Gunda. Or not clear why it's not coming through. Everything's working on the vehicle. The batteries are charged. The inverter's working. We're getting a picture on our front monitor. But somewhere between there and here is a bit of a problem and we suspect after we've been through everything, that it's due to the heat. So,
here we are pause and close views hello everybody on Ustream signing into Facebook Juma Mails right so shoo emails to get through but at the same time sorry I'm just trying to concentrate on opening up all the correct tabs and everything else and in close things I don't need like 21 little windows that ask me to log on to Facebook when I'm already logged on Judy's been invaded with the worm. Oh, I hope it's not a bad one. Gotten into my email, forwarded. Da, da, da. Sure. Maybe that's also a worm itself. It's okay, Judy. Best of us get caught by these things. Thank you, Peter, in Sweden. Sweden hears me. Good. Good afternoon to Sweden. Nice to know, because you're Sweden, you're about on the same time zone as us. And also, writer in Kelowna, British Columbia. Just can't see me now, unfortunately you can't. But, uh, well, there are some of my zebra stripe caterpillars here. How about a... taste of things to come in the next few days with it being full moon expecting a night like this pretty soon very very hot temperatures that we have here right now and Penny actually warned us this morning Penny was saying that they had a heat wave yesterday I suppose we could call this a heat wave in a way it is but essentially it's a really really high spike in the temperature and a lot of that has got to do with maybe something coming from the south weather wise I need to look up, I, I need to try and find a satellite image of southern Africa, see what weather's moving up from the south. So, hello everybody in chat. Some new names that I haven't seen before. I have to load pictures to have a slideshow. Who was that asking about a slideshow? I think I've, I've lost it now. Chat. There we go. Sand. Oh, is that Sandy? Where's lightning pole? There ain't none. Hello, Teresa. Deb and Janine and slideshow. And, uh, I'd have to get my hard drive out and load some pictures onto it all. This is an impromptu of some of the pictures I've already got on for on uh, this computer. can try and find some more that might not be here yet that I might not have shown like I'll get to questions I'm sure there's a question or two and I might have shown this one before That one. One of my favorite insects. Known as a robber fly. And quite interestingly, you'll see its legs are shaped very similar to the, the, the way dragonfly's legs are shaped. And that is because, like a dragonfly, this particular fly catches other flies in midair or actually any flying creature since I've seen one of these catching a dragonfly ooh I need to find you that photo but it's not on this computer but that's so that it can hold its prey right at its mouth while in flight without having to think about things And this is another one. This one I actually watched emerge f 
from its pupa. Slightly different species. Okay. So let's leave that on for a bit. No, no, we won't. We'll put a flower on. Flower. One that I can't still cannot identify. One that I've had on a number of times trying to get an ID and not been able to and still not trying to still not getting it, but one of these days we'll get it. Okay, there we go. Flower, of course, for the ladies. Back to chat and back to see what you're all talking about and to see what I can answer for you. Glad you enjoyed the flowers, Jane. Hello, Arlene. No. Mail, emails, there are quite a few coming through. Hello, Lisa in the UK. New Mexico, Jody, hello. Pat. James in Devon, hello, James. I've got a cousin in Devon, near Totnes. And Roy. Tara's canned beans, yeah. That's what it is causing temperature spikes. Too bad about the overheating problem. And Randy, very good suggestion. But that has always got something to do with it, especially having come through a dry season. And a very good suggestion there. Randy is saying that uh, we need to open up things like the modulator and the broadcast equipment and, and dust it out and get insects out. Only thing is none of us are really qualified to do that. And with especially the amplifiers and things, I'm not touching it. I know that one was blown last year and it cost us a fortune to replace and we can't really afford to have any of us make a mistake. But um, it is something to consider especially, as I say, having come through a dry season. And, uh, well, we'll have to try and look into doing something like that. But that might be a contributing factor to what we're experiencing at the moment. Janina wants to know how we survived the heat without aircon. Well, here in FC we could do with an aircon, and I think it's actually more for the equipment's sake than ours, although that might be open to debate. But I grew up in the heat, so for me I'm kind of used to it. I can't really deal with it when it's excessively hot because of the heat. In other words, places that become hotter than normal, like the inside of a car after it's been sitting in the sun, or for that matter, the inside of a little wooden shack with a tin roof after it's been sitting in the sun. But that's fine because it's that time of the year when there's so much happening outside that it, I'm happy to do stuff outside. I was working on tires and Land Rover today, personal stuff. And I can handle the heat. I can do anything in the heat. It's the cold, as you noticed in our winter months, the cold that we can't deal with because we get so used to the heat. Deborah in Michigan. If MI is Michigan, I think MI is Michigan, isn't it? Deborah? Just making a comment about the rhinos and enjoyed seeing them the other day and learning, or rather, having getting a strong dislike for poachers, as we all do. And it is a pity, because of it all, that we have got to take that stance not to show them on camera. And hello again, Helvi in Sweden, Peter Peterson. I haven't heard of the town Helvi. Have to look it up. But thanks for your email, Peter. 
Also, kind of heat wave in the heat wave in the north of Sweden, 12 to 14 degrees for daytime and 8 to 9 during the night. Whereas last year, this time they were under 30 centimeters of snow already. And Peter also wants to know. No, wrong email. Elephant question. Terry in Kelowna, British Columbia. Where's the question? Makes you sad to see an elephant alone. Should it? No, it shouldn't. Not at all. Um, you really got to remember, Terry, that the moment that we see an animal alone is only a very short moment in time in the terms in terms of the, that animal's lifespan, and you can never m m assume that that one minute or five minutes or even if it's an hour that we view an animal, you can never assume that that animal is alone for any length of time longer than we actually view it. So it's, it's, it's hard to get emotionally involved when you see even at that young elephant the other evening. I've seen human children cry in supermarkets because they lost mom briefly or um, things like that. So, to see something very briefly and, and, and to assume that it's alone from only one or even an hour out of its lifetime, it's, one shouldn't get too emotional about things like that. And uh, as far as male elephants are concerned, any bull, it's quite normal to see them alone. So, you should never really feel sad when you see an elephant alone. Excuse me a sec, I'm just going to consult with my colleagues. Well, good news, everybody. While I've been chatting to you, Seb and Tara have been working on the Gunda and trying to get things going. And finally, we've got a picture coming into FC. So I'm going to head out, and uh, we'll spend the next hour seeing what we can find for you on this lovely warm evening. And hopefully we'll be able to find something. Um, for the time being, though, I'm just going to leave a picture on the screen, and I'm going to give everything back to Seb. And hope you'll enjoy this last hour with me. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, before I go, you stream. Let's look at the picture of the rubber fly. Feather Lynn, Donna, Salty, and me. Salty Lynn, Tana. Hmm, and Linda. I'm not too sure if you're hearing me because I'm not getting. Hi, Mark. You guys can hear you fine. Okay, good. Thank you, Salty. In the northeast. No, it's not Lentana. I told you a long time ago, it's not a Lentana. It's a small ground plant. Let me show you quickly. I'll show you what it looks like on the ground before I go out on drive. I'm still blown away by this plant. I still don't know what it is, but here we go. It's got, it's got, Unfortunately, not gonna. I'll try and zoom in eventually. But there, that's the plant on the ground. Lantana is a bush with big, round, hairy, rough leaves. This is not a lantana, unless you get a species of lantana that's low to the ground. That gives you a bit of scale. Those are dried leaves, and there's some green grasses amongst it. And I'll try and zoom in a little bit, like that. There we go. Oh. No, something happened. I just lost it. Last, last picture. Da -da -da. Hang on, I'll be back in a sec.
came back again. Because we had it on for two minutes and the picture's gone again and it might be a heat issue. Still quite hot. Sun is set. It's not dark yet, but of course it's this it's post sunset glow outside. And picture's back. And picture's back. Sorry if I was shouting in your ear. But there, I've zoomed in a little bit on that plant. I'm going to try and do that again. Or just m move it up. There you go. And then we zoom in again. You can see the leaves, very thin, very narrow leaves. Then zooming in again. So, in my books, that's not a lantana. But I'm really open to suggestions because I've been trying to get the idea on this wonderful flower. And I've only ever seen it once. There was another flower that was very similar that grows in the drainage line. And it's the coral senecia. Uh, we've lost picture again. We're switching it on. We get picture here in FC. And then for some reason it's just cutting out. So might still be here for a little while. Back to chat. Back to see. Yeah, but Lantana is also a bush, Enid. And this is a very low daisy-like ground plant. I see some of you are on the other one. Leaves look like tarragon. Yes, they do. Planted his bulby found. Yes, I did. Next to my bonsai baobab. Marigold. Yeah, it's kind of like a marigold, but it's not. Individual petals are different then. Is it different then, different from, or different to? What is the correct English? Carolyn? It's not lantana. Read my lips. Emails, what have we got in the dung beetle question coming from Watch and Wait. Okay. DMC bird. Are dung beetles specialized? Do some prefer carnivore dung while others prefer herbivores? Also saw young vervets playing with banded mongoose on Pete's pond. Were they indeed playing? That's interesting. We'll get to that question shortly. But firstly, let's talk about our little scarabs. They're so highly specialized... That different scarabs, let's call them scarabs, I think some people are offended by, in fact I'm sure the dung beetles themselves would be a little offended by their name. So yes, some scarabs are very spe hi so highly specialized that because of a decline in certain herbivore species, they have either become extinct or have become severely threatened. And one case in point is our Addo Elephant Park down in the Cape. Lost picture again. Sorry, lost picture again. Um, hang on I've got to keep up with things I've got to show you how, how multitasking capable I am because while we're talking about oh no, I don't want to open the picture in a paint I want to open the picture in Wirecast open the picture in Wirecast there we go this is just a sepia shot of that beautiful head and uh, well, it's just a beautifully shaped head of the scarab. Move it down a little bit. It's a little bit too high up. But yeah, talking about scarabs, down in the Eastern Cape, where there was a large population of elephant and black rhino, there, was a v there is a very large scarab that has become a ground dweller over so many millennia that it lost the use of its wings and its elytra, which are the hard outer wings of a beetle, fused, and it was terrestrial-based. And there were enough large herbivores like elephant and black rhino who had a very similar diet for those very large dung beetles to make a good living, but then came along human beings and kind of wiped out the rhino and almost wiped out the elephant, and in the process almost wiped out that particular family of scarabs but thanks to the efforts of other humans from probably a different planet, those scarabs managed to survive on account of those humans protecting the last remaining elephants and reintroducing black rhino. To such an extent that some humans from that nice planet actually erected signs along the roads warning motorists of the presence of these scarabs and 
Well, hopefully people heed those warnings and don't drive over them. Then on to your vervets playing with banded mongoose. Watch and wait. DC, DMC. Bird. Asking uh, were, they, were they playing. I would have had to have watched that to be able to see, but I really can't comment. I would imagine they were. Um, Intraspecific behavior like that isn't very common, and it is certainly noticeable. I see I've got a message on Skype. Who's that? Karin. Hello, Karin. What's up? Thanks, Corin. Just mentioning about the click that you had when I said we had. I think that's just getting the signal from the vehicle, maybe. But interesting that actually it was four minutes ago. I'll keep Corin's window open just in case she needs to tell me again. So here's something. But Teb, uh, Teb and Sara. No, Sara and Teb. No, Seb and Tara. That's right. They're working on the vehicle. They're trying to get things going, and hopefully we can get out for a bit. If not, it'll just have to be tomorrow morning. And in the meantime, intraspecific behavior like that, not an, not uncommon, but actually no, it's not common, but it's, it's not that unusual. I have seen in incredible interactions with different animals playing. I can't say that I've ever seen vervets playing with banded mongoose, but that must have been interesting. But thanks for the question. Next. But thanks for the ticking noise, Janina, also saying, as well as Karen. Where else will we see more baby impala? Right here on this very open area near camp. That was only the first. There are still a hundred or so females to give birth. We're going to be having a lot of action in the next couple of weeks. In fact, the next two weeks are going to be very, very busy with young impala. And, and sure, perhaps it's going to break some of our hearts because we're going to be seeing some of them possibly getting caught. Um, there are going to be some interesting times. Along with this mass birthing that's going on with the impala is the fact that a lot of eagles come along to eat the afterbirth and you often find batelier or vultures in a tree where a female has just given birth. So I'm, I'm hoping we're going to see some of this activity. I'm hoping too, more than anything, is to go out on drive one morning and actually witness an impala giving birth. I've never seen it, and I would love to. As common as it may be at this time of the year, and it might well be that for the better part of the last 40-something years I've been in the bush, I still haven't been able to see it. Thanks, Lynn, in Canada. Just getting back to what I was saying earlier. Lynn saying that when she was at school they were taught that the correct expression was different from. Somehow in the back of my mind that does ring a bell, but somehow also, why do I think of different to? And then maybe suddenly that doesn't make much sense. Different from, different to. Okay, different from. So different from this email is another email from James picture from Zambia in 1971 of a particular rhinoceros beetle now, funny enough you should send that in because I actually found a rhinoceros beetle that must have died outside my room last night on account of the uh, it, it, it being attracted by the light and maybe dying at the light can I do that no I was trying to copy that maybe I can do it this way save image and then I can put image in where's mark desktop put it in there and see if I can get it onto uh, Wirecast for you an interesting rhinoceros beetle that James has got on I've actually got some footage of uh, this rhino beetle uh, as well as we see a lot of them in the it's a particular rhinoceros beetle that the male has that very prominent horn and the female doesn't. But also, they favor, I've seen them in domestic horses. There we go. This is, here it is. It shows how I can, 
it's not going to be a great because I've copied it off of the internet, which is from a viewer. So this rhinoceros is another scarab. And uh, it shows how technology works. I can copy it off of an email from James, who was in Zambia in 1971, on a three-year contract. This rhinoceros beetle, I've got one burrowing into the soil after it was done doing whatever it wanted to do. They tend to live inside piles of uh, zebra dung or they utilize it and just burrow underneath it. I've seen it and horse, I've seen these beetles in horse stables actually because they go for the zebra dung, as, I mean the horse dung as well. Horse manure. Horse, yes, that, fer that fertilizer stuff. Interesting dung beetle, they're about scarab. They're about three inches long and you don't want to get your finger caught between that horn, horn and that little dimple in the thorax and they use that for fighting, for competing with each other. Thank you James. Linda sending me a picture of wild verbena. I think I've looked at that before. But the wild verbena pentanesia, I've seen it flowering on Nyala Road South. And I was actually there today looking for it. But no, that's not a pentanesia, this orange thing. Because the pentanesia that I'll, I'll show you, I will find you. The next time I go out, I'll find you the pentanesia. This is a flower that Linda is suggesting, I think, for this, the orange one, Linda. Am I right? Let me go back to that email. Getting closer to what I have although the description doesn't exactly match. Similar but different. Linda in a nice and cool Dallas. Thanks, Linda. It is similar but different. Similar in that I think most of the plant is similar. It's actually more woody, this, the, the pentanesia. This is a more succulent, not... It's a softer, almost chrysanthemum type leaf and flower leaf. But yes, I will find you the pentanisia because not only the pentanisia is flowering at the moment, but the, also the pavetta is flowering, and I've been looking for them, and I just haven't been able to find. It's funny, I find them when I'm on camera, but not when I'm driving. Male or female, crown-shaped head. I'm not too sure what we're talking about, because that email came in six minutes ago. Raisa? Go to chat. Are you in chat? I don't know. I'll just have to wait for your next email, Raisa, but I'm not too sure what you're referring to. Tony? Breaking up and there's no picture. Hmm. Okay, I'm going back to chat. Can anybody tell me in Wild Earth Chat whether you can see me and hear me, please? Then I've been talking to the eth to the ether, to the... <coughs> uh-huh. So that other dung beetle is still up on... My Ustream is showing the other dung beetle. Linda Hunt is saying yes, but I don't know what... Okay, so Linda's saying fine, and Lynn in is fine. So I think that must mean, there we go, back Joey. Hello, Joey. Shalom, Rafiki Yangu. Actually, yeah. only see the beetle, and you can hear me in Texas. Okay. Hello, Rose. Happy birthday, Rose. So this email is from Tony. I think it's your side because I'm not breaking up. How long do we know the sex of the lamb? Oh, mm. well, we could probably find out fairly soon if we could see it urinate, to be blunt. But it's going to be a good four or five months before the hornbuds are going to show. 
Deb, I like Deb in Connecticut. Ah, thanks, and Deb said she sent in the answer, the hammercock for the bird. Thank you, Deb. I think I should be able to take it off. Okay, just going sound down, be back in a sec. Okay, well, um, I am back again, and I just want to mention, we've tried, or well, Seb and Tara have tried pretty much everything they could, and our last resort right now is to restart this computer here in FC. It's what we had to do at the beginning of Drive, and we're going to try that now. And, well, we don't have much time left of the Drive this evening, but we're still going to try and work on things and get things going so that we can at least have a good Drive tomorrow morning. But... We're going to try with the computer, so I'm going to say goodbye to you right now. I'll just quickly go through last questions. Kalan Shoei, Rotunda Folia, I'll look at that. Kalan Shoei is a difficult group of plants, uh, normally bulbs and long leaves, but I'll check on that. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, the beetle as male, I think, Raisa, I must check on that too. Joey. Israeli beetles. No, we don't get those. Um, all right, and there's an email from uh, Michaela. Good night, Michaela. I'll read that shortly, but that's not something, that's something offline. Okay, so we're going to start the computer. Everything's going to go black and blank, and we'll be back shortly, and hopefully everything will be fine. Bye for now. <laughs>